In this video, I'm going to put together a couple of different Azure Data Factory techniques and patterns to demonstrate to you how you can use mapping data flows to transform data against an on-prem SQL server, and to do that only against data that has changed using the Delta data loading pattern within Data Factory. Okay, so now I'm not going to go into too much detail on the Delta pattern because we have that fully documented online. I'll put the links to that in the video description. I'll also share with you the end-to-end -end solution here, the JSON uh, for this factory, so that you can use this within your own environment. <clears throat> Just plug in the names of your databases or your credentials and whatnot, and you can use it. I'll have the sample data and schemas in there as well. Let me just quick walk you through what the pipeline does first. The pipeline, the first uh, couple of things it does are all related to the uh, Delta data loading pattern. The first one is actually a lookup that goes and get the, gets the last version of the uh, rows. We're, I'm using change tracking on my SQL server. So I'm going to connect into my uh, local SQL server and I have on my laptop here, I have running a self-post integration runtime that opens up the connection to my uh, to my factory and so that's azure data factory can reach my on-prem or my laptop essentially <clears throat> sql server so within there i have a table that stores the uh, latest version of the um, change so the change tracking maintains this information i just stored in here so i have a flag that tells me what the latest sys change version is so that lookup is grabbing that it's the last version then once we copy the data into blob we're then going to run a store procedure to update that um, that flag or that row, uh, that column. So this will then become 10 and the version will increment. And we'll do that through the stored proc. Now we're going to look up to see what the current version is. And the current version is going to come from this query right here, which is actually coming in from the change tracking feature of SQL Server. Now, once we have the version numbers, what I can do is I can plug those into a query. So I'm going to use copy, the copy activity to get the latest rows that have changed within that table and the query here. And again, this is all documented, but I'll just walk you through this real quick. I'm going to grab the last version from that lookup activity and the current version, and then we'll pass those into the, um, into the query against our um, source table and our, ch our um, the source data uh, table and using the change tracking function so that we can tell it which table and which version to pull. So when, within this query, we can say, give me the person ID, the name and the age from that source table. That way we'll get the actual data that's changed, not just the fact that data has changed, we'll get the actual data. And by the way, the schema for this table is very simple. It just looks like this. It has a person ID, a name, and an age. All right, great. So um, back here, now we've run that query to, and the sync for the copy activity. What we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the rows that have changed. And we're gonna store those in a CSV file in blob store. So I'm using the incremental daily CSV uh, data set that I created and that will store those changed rows into blob. So now we've got the data from on-prem into Azure, which means that before we go into, sorry, before we go into data flow, we have to run the stored proc. The stored proc will update that table with the flag that says the latest version of the rows is, and that's coming from the change tracking feature of SQL Server. So we just send to it um, these parameters in the stored proc, and again, it's getting the, um, uh, the change tracking versions from those two lookups. You see the activity lookup, current activity lookup last. Great, so the store proc and all the code is in the docs. And then once we've got the data, we've updated our source table. Uh, essentially, this is our control table telling us the version number. Once that's all done, now we can go ahead and we can uh, cleanse the data. So I have a clean data, a set of transformations at the end. That's my data flow. And let's go into that. It's very simple. So I'm using the exact same source. So the um, data set I'm using to land the data that's changed as CSV in Azure, it's sitting in Blob. I can access that here from Dataflow. And you see that it has those three columns, person ID, name, and age, plus the two bits of information coming from change tracking and SQL Server, the change version and operation. Now you can use those within your, your Dataflow to make some choices and, some makes, and to make some conditional um, transformations. What I'm going to do with those is I'm going to first of all, I'm going to filter out the deletes. Um, I can do that in a later demo, but in this demo, I just want the inserts. I'm, I'm keeping the updates because um, I actually, I take the back and just do want to do updates as well. And the determination of what to do against those because uh, we have the flag coming from change tracking is done in the alter row. So I have this alter row, which I call alter row rules. And in there, I'm saying that um, insert the rows if the assist change operation was I. Uh, update if it's you and D if it's delete. So it's a very good mapping from the SQL Server uh, flags to uh, what we do in Data Factory Dataflow. 
My transformation is very, very simple. I'm just going to cast the incoming CSV string columns to integers for person ID and age. The name is just going to init cap. This is essentially Camel Case Singer setting the first character to a uh, to a cap. And that's all I'm doing. And so then when I'm done, I'm going to put that data into an Azure SQL database. So I'm seeking to an Azure SQL database. This is essentially going to take my on-prem, move it transformed. Uh, so I should put it another way. It's going to take my data from on-prem. It's going to move it. It's going to transform it and then put it into an Azure SQL database. So my mapping is just keeping those three columns. I'm not going to land the columns from the change tracking. That's irrelevant. This is just going to end up with uh, transformed clean data at the end. So the end-to-end -end looks like that. And uh, before we run this, I will uh, have you know that there are no rows um, in the table. So let me actually grab this because I realize it's off the screen for you. So this one right here is my source. This is my um, this is my on-prem. Yeah, this is actually the wrong one. My on-prem. No, I have that right. Yeah, this is my on-prem table. So let's go ahead and execute that query. And there are no rows in it. And then this is my, uh, again, I have to bring this down for the screen, for the screen capture. You will see that there are no rows in my target Azure SQL database. Okay, fine. So let's put a row in there. I'm going to come up with a um, person ID of one, a name of Robert Robertson. Let's actually give Roberts a middle initial. Robert, I have an R. Robert R. Robinson. Robertson. There you go. And the age, I'm just going to put 40 for this uh, fictitious person, and we're going to insert that row. Now when we do that, that's going to activate the change tracking on SQL Server. That's going to uh, create the tracking version and the columns, uh, inf the column information. And so what we can do now is we can go ahead and run our data factory. So the idea here is you would uh, run this data factory on whatever cadence that you wish to from a trigger. Uh, you, you build a schedule, and that can go and pull for these changes from your SQL Server at whatever frequency that you want. So let's give this a minute. Okay, so the lookups completed. I got the version numbers. It's now going to do that copy from on-prem, my laptop database. Uh, it's going to take from SQL Server. It's going to put that into blob. That's done. Now it's going to run the SQL Server stored proc to update. Again, this is on my laptop. It's going to update the uh, latest version the latest tracking version. And once that's done, it's going to move into the data flow. So the data flow is going to take that data and it's going to change the casing of that, um, um, of the name. And right there is the file that it landed. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Yes, that's fine. Let's open it. Okay, there it is. So that's the <clears throat> that's the file coming from SQL Server. It has all the lower casing, doesn't have the proper casing done on it. And these, this is the um, system version now, and this has changed with I. So that'll be an insert. Okay, so let's go back to our data factory now. And the transformation is still occurring. That should be done in just a second. Um, when it's done, actually it might be done by the time I get over here, we can query our uh, target uh, table in Azure SQL Server, and uh, there it is. It's now in Azure, and it's proper cased because Dataflow proper cased it and loaded it into um, into Azure SQL. So let me show you how I did that, by the way. So I showed you that the source was the exact same um, data set, and then the sync is just using a new data set, which is going to Azure, uh, to Azure Database. Now, I also have set on my source is to delete the source file when it's done. That way, when you're doing something like I'm doing in my case, which is I'm always running this daily, getting the changes to that table daily, um, this file then uh, won't be over or won't be reused. It won't uh, um, sort of, you know, create a, a conflict because what happened is, now when I refresh this, you see that's gone because when the data flow is done, it removes the file when we're done with the ETL. And so now that's all done. You see that everything is green and succeeded. So that is how you can transform data coming from SQL Server with Azure Data Factory Mapping Data Flow using the Delta Data Change Pattern. Hope you enjoyed. See ya.